Welcome to the Celia Lee Show. I am your host, Celia, and today we've got a beautiful guest coming on. Can you see his t-shirt? It says Goddess Squad. So we're going to probably be talking about goddesses. I don't know. But anyway, um, introduce yourself before um, going to I'm the topic. I'm Gillian, and for the past couple of years, I would say, I've been doing uh, a bit of modelling now and then, mm-hmm. uh, mainly nudes. Mm-hmm. So Interesting. Um, Okay. Yeah, and I think that's, that's mainly what we're going to be talking about. Yeah, right? and because basically that's the main reason why I got you on. Okay, um, got you to come on. So me and Gillian, we've never met. Today's actually our first time meeting each other. Um, you, we, we follow each other on Instagram. Yeah. And I think you followed me a year ago. I don't know how you found me. You somehow came across my profile. I guess you just possibly. I have no idea. Yeah. Do you remember why you followed me? No, uh. it was so bizarre, because when you messaged me, I'm thinking, who is this girl? Yeah. And then obviously I had to check out your profile and I thought, oh, okay, this is really interesting. And as soon as I heard that first podcast with Preachy, I was like, yeah, I'm in there. Uh, okay. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's weird, it's funny, because you followed me, and I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking the same, like, who, who's, this, who's this lady? And then I was like, I see you doing your thing, all this body to positivity. I was thinking, oh, she must follow me because about... Because I promote a lot about uh, body positivity, body confidence. I was thinking maybe that's why she started following me. But, um, but okay. So we talk about the nude modeling thing in a bit. Yeah. But obviously you said you, you listened to the Poochie uh, podcast. So um, you can relate as an Asian girl about the stuff that we're going through. So I want to talk about specifically body confidence. So as an Asian girl, so you're uh, Chinese, right? Yes, I'm Chinese. Um, Talk about the stuff you went through. Anything that you went through as a young girl, like body confidence wise, like were you always confident? Um, I would say I've never really thought of myself as, you know, too fat, too thin. Too, mm-hmm. you know, I was never worried about yeah. the way I looked. And, um, and I remember specifically for some reason when I was about 15, 16, going to Hong Kong to see family. And I hadn't been for a good 10 years. Yeah. I was like a little toddler when I left. Yeah. And, um, and I'd have family members saying, well, that's a bit skimpy, you shouldn't be wearing that. I'm thinking, oh, but why? Mm. When I'm a teenage girl, yeah. why should I be worried about what other people think of what yeah. I'm wearing and how I look? Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's just one of those things that's ingrained in my mind. Yeah. Where, 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 you, where was you born? I was born in Holland. Yeah. I grew up in Holland until I was 11. Uh-huh. So uh, I think maybe that's got something to do with yeah. the way my yeah. mindset is. Yeah. We're very similar, you know, for those who follow me know that I'm from Sweden. I was born in Sweden, came here when I was seven. Um, yeah. So specifically, did, did you ever have family members telling you, oh, because like, I'll be frank, like even me, like we're not exactly thin for, for mm. in, the, in the Asian community. So did they ever say anything like, you look a bit big or like you know things like that and all the struggles all the time and I, even from a very young age i was known as femoy mm. by the entire family yeah so femoy for those who don't chinese means they're a fat girl yeah like. <laughs> and it's, it's not said maliciously yeah 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 yeah, yeah. It, they've got to think the, of that it's like yeah no, the, no, yeah no. the language is um when you say in Chinese, it doesn't sound as harsh. In fact, fame, we sometimes can sound a bit c- kind of cute, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was used to it, and I <laughs> yeah. never thought of it as, as anything that's negative. But yeah. now thinking back, you kind of think, oh, come on. How? If any other person, any other girl, yeah. had body confidence issues, yeah. that would affect them for life. Yeah, oh, 100%. Like, because I, I used to say, t- I said, think about this um, I said this to my mom actually I said I said mom like the stuff that you said to me as I was growing up I'm so glad that I'm a strong person that I managed to like handle it because I think I'll be for, for the stuff that you said to me I don't think I should be this person today I think I'll be freaking um like low self-esteem like really insecure but I'm like the total opposite I'm just like well good for you glad that you came out like that. <laughs> um because I when you, when you spoke about going to Hong Kong when you was 15 yeah I had a not about being uh, wearing skimpy stuff. So when I was f- so similar similar to you, when I was growing up, um, I didn't think I was too thin or too big, nothing like that. Literally just you know getting on with my day, right? Um, just knowing I was average size, you know that. But up until I think fourteen, I went to Hong Kong. 
uh, for holiday to meet to see my family. And then my cousin was like, um, about my cheeks, because back then I was a bit probably a little bit chubby. You know, when you're younger, you have like round cheeks. She was like, think I'll find with bow. So I was saying like, why does my cheeks look like buns like that? <laughs> and then I was shocked that he said that. I just looked at him like, I just ignored him, man. <laughs> and then I was thinking, did he really just call me fat? Just like that. Because um, obviously in the UK, you don't get told like straight up, like you're fat like that. And um, so that really hurt me. And then that's not it. Then another night, same same holiday. I, I don't remember if it was the same holiday, but anyway, because I used to go to Hong Kong every summer when I was in school. So anyway, so another year, um, I actually uh, mentioned this story before in my, in, in the episodes before in the ep- uh, old episodes my auntie took me to um this night market it's in hong kong you know loyang guy yeah so this night market and to buy clothes so my auntie took me to buy some jeans and she goes to me what size are you celia i said oh i don't know um because because the because we do it eight ten yeah. over there it's like in inches like 38 all of that mm-hmm. kind of stuff um so then uh, the store owner was like oh don't worry i've got measuring tape so got the measuring tape to measure my hips. At the time, bearing my mind, you know what? I'm actually bigger now than back then. Anyway, so my hip they measured it as 38 inches around here, and then he goes 38. And my auntie, in front, in, out in public, he went. She went, oh my god, Celia! In Chinese, oh my god, Celia, 38. Like she went, Celia, Sam's a butt. Come dying like that, like so big, like she and she was like, "You're only 16. How big are you gonna be when you're 18?" Oh, I'm mortifying. Y- yes, in public, and there's other people. Like, remember, it's a market. I'm telling you, I wanted to go home. I was like, I felt so embarrassed. I was traumatized. I was just like, yeah. Now, what made it even worse is down the store, and I was like, "Oh, is she from overseas?" Oh, yeah, that's normal. <laughs> All overseas girls are yeah. bigger. And then after this, he had to get my jeans because you know in those market, they only hang the um, the, smaller the, the smaller sizes. So my size, he had to go under the table where it's still wrapped up and everything tied up in the in the, in the pile to get out for me. And uh, yeah, that was so traumatizing. It's, it's like whenever I used to go to the night markets, I would say. As soon as I pick something up and it's this free size, like one size fits all. Nah, I'm not even <laughs> going to bother. Yeah. Because it, it's not going to fit all. Yeah. How can you have one size fits all? Yeah. And also, you know what? Like, um, I, in the UK, I'm a size small mm. back then anyway, but now I'm a medium. But when I go every, go, every time I go to Hong Kong, I remember the first time I was like, oh, a small, let me get my small. Went to a change room. Jesus, I couldn't even freaking. Like yeah, <laughs> I couldn't get into small. And I thought, okay, maybe medium. I still couldn't get into medium. So basically, a size 10 over there is a large. Yeah, so for a good few years in my teens, I struggled with my body confidence. Like, you see, I wouldn't even wear dresses that shows my leg. Mm. Um, like, you say something on trains in Hong Kong, when if I was to wear shorts, if I'm sitting on a train or or or, or tr- uh, a bus, I would never sit my legs like this. I would always have, I would tiptoe, so my so legs, yeah, 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 that's I what know. I used to do. Yeah, so that's all that struggles and all that. Oh my god! So I, I, what comments did you have said see, to you? I, that's the thing. I've, it's never really bothered me, and it's it's really strange because like the name calling and stuff. Mm. Like, it's it's always from the Chinese community. I've oh. never got it. From, from Westerners. Yeah, you know? same. So, um, I always thought I was normal. And if everybody, any, anybody called me a name, it'd be like, yeah, well, that's of their opinion. Mm. You know? And I'd sh- sh- shrug it off. And it's, it's weird, because you think as a teenager, a lot yeah. of this stuff would affect you. Yeah. Um, and I think the other thing is, though, sometimes I get from the, the bigger girls saying that I'm not plus size. Mm, mm, and then mm. that's kind of like okay well i'm not thin i don't i don't know for certain that i'm not a thin yeah. person i'm in between I'm, I'm, I'm about 16 18 at the moment okay. and it's probably on the larger side of what i can be because mm-hmm. i've been a size 10 12 mm-hmm. you know so growing up you yeah. was a size 10 uh 12 12 ish, okay yeah so and then when you get a bigger girl saying oh well, you're not you're not that big you're not you're not plus size but yeah I don't want to identify as a certain size or I don't want to yeah. be boxed into this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not a size queen. No, I'm not massive, but I'm not, neither am I a, a typical model. Mm-hmm. I'm five foot three and I'm, you know, my weight fluctuates. Yeah. Why does it matter to have that 
box to put yourself in. Yeah. So. So just talk about the modelling bit then. Um, what? So t- talk more about the modelling. What kind of model are you? So how it came about was I've always wanted to kind of like do a boudoir shoot. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's just something for myself, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. not necessarily for a partner. I mean, at the time I was with somebody, um, but it was just like, oh, I want to feel sexy. Yeah. I think, I think it will look nice. Did you always feel sexy from young? I... Like, would you... Because a lot of women find it awkward to be sexy. How did you, what was sexy to you? Like, was it a, ew, ew? I can't, it's really hard to explain because yes. I think some pe- some women don't feel sexy unless they've got high heels on and mm-hmm. they've got a, like a killer dress on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and others, it's it's more like I want to feel sexy for my man. And it's, yeah. it's all about another person making you feel that way mm. and for me um being sexy isn't necessarily being sexy in, in the bedroom right you know, or, or being sexualized in any way yeah it's, it's just that body confidence like yes that. so and um yeah i think confidence is something i've always had um mm-hmm. maybe there was a few years there was a bit of a dip yeah. where i kind of felt you know what i feel a bit awkward mm. i feel like i'm an outsider i just feel like fraud sometimes what do you mean why, why do you mean you're fraud um, how old were you I you're saying? i don't know I, th- I think this was probably in my early 30s yeah i just suddenly I just bring the mic oh. a bit closer yeah yeah i think i went through uh, a period which is, i wouldn't even call it dark times but i just felt like i wasn't in the right space and mm. i didn't feel like i was um accepted as me by who a society a society you know, okay just just, just so there was something off. Mm. And I think it's, it was just maybe the people that I was hanging around with. Mm-hmm. Or actually, I, at that time, I felt like I had no friends. And I think probably it was just after I had my child. I was mm. a mother. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. didn't go out. Mm. I didn't go to the gym. I wasn't socializing. Yeah. And at that time, I, t- I did feel like, you know what? I, d- I don't have any friends. And, you know, if I died tomorrow, no one would care. That yeah. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and um, yeah, that was a bit dark yeah and that's when i started going to the gym you know i've got to do something about my yeah. life i need to m- meet people mm. and, and socialize yeah and i think that's that's what got me out of it uh-huh. and how did you get into the modeling the modeling like i said i, I really wanted to do a boudoir shoot of yeah sort, and prices aren't cheap yeah so uh, i followed a few photographers and there was one photographer um who said he needed ambassadors mm-hmm. um that will give him the approval of putting things on social media. Mm. Now, most women, obviously, boudoir shoots are intimate. Yeah. It's for themselves, and it's yeah. not something that they want to share with the world. Yeah. Um, and for me, it was like, you know what? I am proud of who I am, and I'm proud I of my I love body. that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I don't care who sees yeah. it, and it's social media, so it's not going to yeah. be through front of the yeah. community, you know? So I thought, you know, as long as it's tasteful, yeah. I'm quite happy for it to, to, to be shown yeah. to the world. Yeah. And hopefully inspire other people. And so do you do this often now? Because I see people, s- it's life sketching, isn't it? Yeah. I've, yeah. I've, that, that it, one thing led to another. Mm. Um, and then, then last year I got a um, message by a an artist who was running a life modelling class. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And out of the blue, because his model had let him down that day, yeah. that morning, yeah. he messaged me and said, I don't know whether you do any life modelling, but, you know, I'm really in a, in a sticky situation. Yeah. Um, if you're happy to do it, can you come tonight? So it was not like something that I thought, you know, oh, I've got, I've got, let me mm. think about it. It was, I had no time to think. Yeah. I just went, yeah, go on. So. Uh, and how did you feel the first time? So literally, s- do, would you, you just have to stay still? Yeah. Naked and just... It was, um, I think the first one I did in my knickers. Yeah. So I, I kept okay. my knickers on. That just makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. I don't mind going topless. Yeah. And I don't mind going aboard on yeah. holiday topless. So yeah. I don't think that's a big yeah. issue for me. Um, it was more wondering whether I can stand still or sit still mm. for that amount of time. Yeah. How long did you sit? Um, the first couple of poses were like two minutes, five minutes. Oh, I thought it's yeah. like an hour. No. You sit there like this, an hour. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. They do. They do several poses. Yeah. You get warm up poses, mm. and then most of the warm up poses are standing. Yeah. And then if it's a longer pose, you sit down. Yeah. And, and for the, the the half hour, forty minute poses, yeah. you end up lying down. <laughs> ah. so How long have you been doing that for? So that was since last 
October, I believe it was. How yeah. many How many times have you done it? Um, oh, about ten, I would say now. So about so what, now, do you go full out? Like yeah, literally. Yeah, I'd, I'd the pussy's out like that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'd take it all off. Yeah, but I wouldn't want to do poses that are sexual. Right. So I, I wouldn't have my legs open. Yeah, and, yeah, you yeah. Know, I know what I mean. It's, 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 it's artistic. Like you say, you want it to be more tasteful. So, like, yeah. basically, like, yeah. sort of like posing yeah. like a goddess, like moving, yeah. showing the curves. Titanic. And the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I love also, especially like as an Asian woman in the also an Asian community, like, how does your family think of it? Um, my mother never talks about it, to be honest. Okay, when you first told her, how did she find out? Did you tell her or? It's just social media posts of right. pictures of drawings that yeah. other people do of me. Yeah. But she's never questioned me about it. So it's just something that's not talked about. What about your other family members? But do they know? neither have they said to me, it's not something you should be doing. So mm. I think um, my mum is quite open. Okay. Yeah, I, d- I don't think she'd want my grandmother to find out though. Yeah. <laughs> For me, like, as much as I'm confident with my body... Mm. But I think that's so brave, like going like naked and posing, just you just put yourself out there and letting people draw you. It's, it's such a safe space though. Mm. That's the thing. It's not like I'm standing out in public in the True. middle of you know. Do you get men drawing? Oh, there are men drawing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But from the drawings you can tell they're into art. They're not there to you know, look at your body yeah. and, and, and look at you in a sexual way. Yeah. They're looking at angles and lighting and you know, proportions, they're not there to, you know, themselves off, basically, yeah. you know what I mean? Well, but, um, uh, is it, how many children do you have? I've got one boy. Just one yeah. boy, so how, what does your son think of it? Um, he just shrugs it off, he knows that it's something that I do. Okay, how old is he? He's 13. Okay, okay. So he's, he's just about kind of like, uh, his body's changing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've had to have some frank discussions with him about kind of sexuality and everything yeah. else. Because I think I think it was only kind of last month when he said to me, you know, oh, I I I, I feel wrong. I was like, well, what do you mean? And I had to kind of coax it out of him. Yeah. Um, where he's actually telling me, well, I've I've been having kind of sexual thoughts and I don't think that's right. And I was thinking, you're 13, your body's mm. changing, your body's all hormones the hormones, yeah. <laughs> I said, this is completely natural and completely normal. Yeah. Yes, it's something that you don't talk about with other yeah. people, and it's it's awkward, but it's really normal, mm. and you can talk to me about it. And you know, and also, especially like in the Chinese community culture, anyway, yeah. like sex is like a is like. It's a like no-no topic. Even to be honest, even now, like I wouldn't. I don't think I would talk about sex with my parents. I remember growing up, even if it's just like watching a movie, it's just someone kissing, just kissing. Yeah. My mum be like, "Cover your eyes, cover your eyes, like <laughs> don't look at it." I'm like, I'm, and as I as I got when I got to, I think it was a sixteen or eighteen years old, we were still watching something together. Uh, a couple was kissing on like, I can't remember it was a movie or whatever it was. She was like, "Stop watching it." I'm like, mum, I'm an adult. She's like, what is it because you want to do with, with your a future man? I was like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. That's what I'm going to be doing. Oh. But yeah, like they just, it's like it's really awkward for them. But I can also see, I can also sense even till now when we watch a movie together, there's like some sort of like, uh, there's, if there's like a sex sex scene, not necessarily you see everything, but at least you just know they're, they're having sex or something. Um, they would, they would act a bit weird. They get all. Oh, they start moving, they still just feel awkward and they start, might get up to do something, to get something. Like, they just feel awkward. I can sense the energy. No, yeah, the energy does change. Yeah. Um, I, th- I, th- just, I think it was, there was one night I was sitting out. I live with my mum. And I was sitting at home alone, um, just flicking through the channels. And it so happens to be naked, naked attraction on. Yeah. And I'm like, it's this while. Let me just watch this a second. I hear the key going into the door and I couldn't change the channel quick enough. Who, who's coming? Your mum's coming home. Yeah, my yeah. mum's coming home. I'm thinking, oh my God, can you imagine what she would think if You're I was watching, watching you porn or something? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, I mean, I'm fascinated by other people's bodies as well. It's mm. not just that. I'm not saying I've, I love myself, you know, and I just want to look at my own body. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm fascinated and I think this mm. was an interesting programme. Yeah. Um, I don't think attraction should be based on physical appearance, but yeah. most of the time, you know, mm. I would say... The first impression is the body. Yeah. I want to talk about, so 
I see you also promote a lot about body positivity, obviously. Mm. And how did you get into it? Was, was you, were you always about that? No, I mean, I would say on my fitness journey, mm. you know, at the time I did think, you know, I'm getting a bit big. I'm mm-hmm. getting, it's not just about the, the size. Yeah. It's also like my clothes aren't fitting anymore. I'm going to have mm. to go and buy new clothes and I don't want to. And I feel a bit sluggish and yeah. a bit slow. And you know, I've got a child. Yeah. At the time he was six, seven years old. Yeah. I was like, if I get any bigger, yeah. I might not be able to kick up with him. Mm. So you see, that's what that's a combination of everything. Yeah, yeah, I love that you, said, you just mentioned about not be able to keep up with him because as a personal trainer a lot of times I always say to people don't just work out for aesthetic reasons Mm -hmm. yes like I get most people are what they want to look good fair enough because I used to look yourself in the mirror like you said I'm getting big or my my, my clothes are not fitting then obviously yeah you feel a certain type of way like you feel probably depressed about your body but however the physical will come regardless okay but I think the main thing is the reason why you're working out is because you want to do stuff with your with your children, keep up with them. You want to be healthy. You want to prevent injury. You want to be able to run after the bus. I don't know. Just do something basic for vitality. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. I mean, getting up off the sofa without groaning. Exactly. Yeah, all exactly. of this stuff. Yeah. It's like you can look amazing. You can have the body. But if inside you're not healthy and also mentally you're not healthy, you're not happy about life, doesn't matter how good your body, you're not healthy. Do you know what I mean? So I just think, like, it's very shallow. I just think you just think deeper. Working out is so you can live longer, prevent diseases, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Same with eating. Eat healthy, not because you want to look a certain way. No, with people like, like, not judging, if you, if you count calories, whatever. If you count calories, and macro count, all that kind of stuff. I don't do none of that. I just think it's long. Because I don't like being attached to the numbers. Mm-hmm. But eat because you want to nourish your body. Because yeah. you love yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, not just because, oh, I want to look this way da, 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 like that, do you know what I mean I think it's, especially for women it's so hard not to comfort eat mm-hmm. you, you yeah, yeah, feel yeah. a certain way and it's like instead of I mean for us we'll probably think you know what I'm going down the gym yeah, yeah. fuck everything else basically yeah, yeah. it's like I'm, I'm just going to do something for me and it's so easy to kind of like you know what I'm sitting at home pack, pack of crisps piece mm. of cake oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> piece of cake and, yeah. and you know you'd feel better for those 10 seconds 10 minutes you know, mm. half hour while you're eating it um, but it's not doing your body any good, and then you feel bad about it, and you get guilt about it the following day, and it's it's just such a vicious circle. Of, mm. you know, I think that's that's where depression comes in. So, you know, it's just so hard to get out of. Yeah. So. Do, you, do you have you ever been depressed? I wouldn't say depressed, but like I said, yeah. you know, I've had that kind of dark times and mm. blue days, and yeah. you know, and I, I can understand how easy it is. I'm really, really sympathetic with anybody. Mm. That, that, you know. Talk about depression, like Chinese people don't will be like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah. What? No, what? no, no. <laughs> it's like medication to. to yeah. yeah. They just think like, just like, just do something happy, makes that makes you happy. That's it. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. They, they don't understand like. Chinese people, it is really hard to understand mm. depression and, and anxiety. Yeah. I mean, with anxiety, I remember I have claustrophobia. Okay. And there was once I had a panic attack, and my mother basically wanted to slap me and just like <laughs> get you yourself know, together, you know, get, get together. together. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, absolutely. I can say like with with our culture, mm. anxiety and depression, it's just like so taboo. And yeah, it's like that as well. And the sex and then like yeah. body, the body image. Like I think it was like the culture is they're savage, you know. Like they just say it how it's like. Then do you know what? Do you know what's so funny though? Let's say I haven't seen you in a while. I'll be like, oh, Jillian, I haven't seen you in a while. Oh, you're looking like the, um, in China. I'll be like, oh, what did I say? Like you, when you look fuller, huh? you, that means it's a good thing. Yeah. They would say, oh, like that. Yeah, yeah, like that. Like, meaning, oh, you put a bit on weight and you look better. Meaning, like, oh, you've been living well. But then they can also say fat as in, in a bad way, like, mm. like something like yeah. that. Like, eat less, something like that. But you say that. It's like, like I said, I live with my mum. Yeah. And obviously, my son's there. Yeah. And because I've worked full time. Yeah. My mum is the one that does the majority of the cooking. Mm. And, and I'm absolutely grateful. Mm. But then she will tell me, oh, your son is eating too much. Yeah. He's, he's getting a bit chubby. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, then don't give him as much. Yeah. You know, he, he eats what he gets given. Yeah. And then, like, 20 minutes later, after telling me how big my boy is getting, 
like, do you want some ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just like... Yeah, and similarly also like about about the fat bit, um, the skinny one. It's so... Like, like you're skinny, you might, you might want to eat more. But then it's like you can't win. You're either too big or you, there's just no in-between or something like that. It yeah. is just... It's done out of a place of love. That's, that's yeah. the thing <laughs> Hey guys, just a quick one before we get back to the episode. I just want to say thank you so, so much for listening and watching whatever you're doing. Like, massive thank you. So much love to all of you for the love and support that you're always showing me. I just want to ask you one big, one big favor. Please, can you hit the subscribe button? That would do so much for me. Like, it would mean the world to me. And I promise you, I will continue to create quality and only, and only do better content and bring more quality guests so yeah anyway thank you so much let's get back to the episode and uh, yeah oh, going back to the topic of like the chinese people talking about body and even in uh, even my chinese friends who grew up you, you think it's just a culture but it's actually even chinese friends who grew up here mm. commented on, on my body as well like my friends used to be like oh your legs are a bit chunky aren't they I've been told that I got like in Chinese, uh, they say in Chinese like elephant legs. Um, they probably did behind my back. You know what? Yeah. Because when I was at secondary school, yeah, most of my friends were Chinese. Yeah. Um, and we hung out, and I, I was, I was the tubby one. Yeah. And I was kind of like the caring one. That, yeah. That that looks after everybody. So I used to be called Zilma. Mm, okay. <laughs> um, and it was always kind of like. You know, my friends were started going out with Chinese boys, yeah. and it would be the Chinese boys saying, "Oh, yeah, you know, your fat friend." Yeah. Oh, I was, that, I was that yeah. one. I was the oh. fat, funny one. Similarly, I had a similar <laughs> situation. So I was out with my like, I used to have uh, more Chinese friends back then as well. We went to Hyde Park, I remember, and then uh, my friend bought her boyfriend, and we just met that day, first time meeting her boyfriend, right? Mm. So we all sat down playing ball games, and um, I had a hoodie on. It was a cropped hoodie, and my jeans was like sort of midways. So as I sat down my waist up like this bit was showing yeah. so bearing in mind back then this is like talking about when i was probably 17 mm -hmm. so i wasn't doing no fitness i was not as toned not that i was fat or anything but anyway my point is i was sitting there with my legs sort of like to side on the grass had my waist showing and i was like oh it's a bit chilly this is summertime though it's a little bit chilly when when the sun's not not out we get a bit chilly yeah. and i was like, oh too tong, a bit chilly and then he, her boyfriend goes yeah, he goes, yeah, because your rolls are showing. And I was like... I'm surprised because most of my friends probably would have said, oh, I'm, I'm surprised you're cold because you've got a nice layer of... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Warm, you know I mean? <laughs> when he just said that, I was just like... I, I didn't know what to say, uh, man. Like, yeah. Uh, oh, dear. But it was like just one of those things, though. I mean, my friends kind of like... Yeah, I was, I was the kind of... Uh, the... The Chinese boys wouldn't fancy me kind of person. Why? Because of your size yeah, or? Well, okay. Um, maybe because I was too outgoing for them because. Like similarly what I we said, me like, and Poochie saying. Yeah, yeah. I don't care about what they think. So your baby um, father is not, not Chinese? No, he's, he's English. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, have you ever dated a Chinese guy? Um, or fancy? Like, do, do you find him attractive? Mm, I, I've never seriously dated a Chinese Okay. Guy. Doesn't mean I haven't slept with any. Okay, it's, okay. It's, no, it's never been a really serious. <laughs> or Asian, not just Chinese, no. but like no. no. Okay, um, I. You know what? I just remembered actually, when I was fifteen, I was like had this like little boyfriend for like two weeks, and he was actually Chinese, mm -hmm. Chinese Vietnamese. But literally, I only when I say back then, you know, back in my generation anyway, like I was fifteen. When when you're fifteen, that those times you literally meet someone on MSN back then. Mm -hmm. And I'm mean, talking, talking, oh, would you be my girlfriend? I'm like, okay <laughs> then. And then we meet up and then we just hold hands. And literally we just met up three times, went to cinema and that's it. We didn't do anything else, just held, held hands each time. Like he, we, each time we met, we only saw each other for like an hour or two. I remember in Wood Green, we walked up and down fucking Wood Green and it was just, it was just so lame. But, but that was like when you're 15 and yeah, a little, it. yeah. And then after this, I was two weeks later, I was like, yeah. I'm, I'm not feeling it. And he was like, oh, you broke my heart. <laughs> that was the only time I dated the, kind of dated a Chinese guy. Mm. But he, I remember he was from Hackney. And yeah. I don't know if you, if you knew, but back then those like, those, those, um, they used to do this like gangster Chinese look, which is have the long fringe. Uh -huh, have yeah. you ever seen them? Yeah. 
the Zhengyi kind of. Yeah, they had. The, yeah, they have yeah, like yeah. this sort of like fringe. All they did, they wish they have like fate, and then just have the the fringe here. All Chinese, all Vietnamese boys that have it, and they would bleach. Either it was a different color. It would be like either blonde or red, and like it would just go down here. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was anyway. a look. Yeah, it was a look. Yeah, I didn't find that attractive. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Um, so, I'm looking at your T-shirt. We've mentioned about a goddess squad. What is that? So, this is Goddess Studios. Um, he's based in Leighton, and um, he messaged me. Well, no, it was it was on Facebook. Like he wanted ambassadors, mm -hmm. and I said, "Yeah, I'll do it." And agreed on a time and date, and I got to the studio. We clicked, and straight away we had an amazing photo shoot i mean and we spent probably about six seven hours shooting wow and, and connecting just it was just such a good vibe um i think it had until like eight o'clock at night <laughs> wow. really i've got to go it was such good fun but it was like okay it's getting late now mm. uh, and the photos could just come out amazing yeah um and we i've just i was just like connecting with the other girls there as well yeah so we became the goddess squad oh nice so is it Something that people can book onto, like what? What is it that they promote? So he does uh, boudoir photography mm -hmm. mainly, um, but he is such an amazing photographer. If mm. you want to get your portraits done, mm. we'll do those. Um, art nudes, so completely naked, but mm. he'll make it so tasteful. Because mm. I've seen your pictures on Instagram, like yeah. I can see they're very artistic, you know, like, yeah. So after that, I've worked with a few more other yeah. photographers, but. Patrick is the one. Mm. Um, I also have a boyfriend down in Bognor, which is a bit far away. Yeah. Uh, but I met him through a, a photography site. Wow. So, uh, that's so talk about photography, um, photo shoots and stuff like that. I believe, so my, this is how, how I got my body confidence is, um, well, from the very beginning it was fitness, mm -hmm. but that was a different type of confidence. Yeah. What really gave, like, to where I am today, actually, there was one day I was doing this um, videography. I was doing like a concept video for dance. Mm -hmm. And it was all the photo, photo, uh, photo, uh, photo shoot, video shoot that helped me with my confidence. I um, was finding my angles. So do you believe, do you think photo shoots will help people build body confidence? I think so. I absolutely yeah. think so. Because it makes you so aware of yeah. every part of your body. Yeah. And, you know... Okay, you don't like your lumps and bumps, but mm. you gotta embrace them, mm. and you can kind of hide them, and you can, yeah. you know, but you can feel absolutely so amazing just yeah. just, just getting the photo shoot done. Yeah, because so. I think like a lot of people be like, oh, I don't look good, I'm not look sexy, I don't know how to pose, so that's why they won't do this photo shoot. But I really think that there's always a warm up when you do photo shoot. There's a warm up. You do them. Um, they first do the photographer would do a warm up shoot for you. Then afterwards, have a little break. Then you then you will start warming up, and then you actually do it. And I really think when you look, when you even at home practice with your phone selfie mode and just find your angles. That's how that's how what helped me when I found my angles. I was like, oh, I look kind of bad, you know. So I know, no. So it's ever since then. And when I started doing photo shoot uh, with like my dance friends back then. They will actually come to me like, oh, Celia, what do I do? How do I pose? How do I pose like that? And then uh, you just, is once you're comfortable with your body, you actually just know how to, in all these shapes, you'd be even more like open, do all the, yeah. like move your I body. Mean, with, with photography, there is a lot of cheating going on. Mm. Like, I mean, you know, there's there's poses where you have to arch your back and then it's, it feels so uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. It, <laughs> it looks good. It the result, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, I know. You know I trust me. And, and, and <laughs> you will look amazing. Yeah. But you hold those poses for like, three seconds yeah as soon as that shot's done you can relax whereas with live modeling mm. like this is a completely different kettle of fish when you're modeling yeah because you have to stay relaxed yeah you can't hold an arch yeah. for 10 minutes so and i think that's another thing that, that made my body confidence absolutely sore because when i see the drawings it's not like oh my god they look made me look so fat mm. it's like that's there interpretation of what they saw in front of them at the time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's beautiful because it's so curvy yes yeah. you know i don't care if there's lumps and yeah. bumps hanging out and there's if they you know show show the cellulite yeah i think it's beautiful mm, I, I love that i love that the ladies are hearing this so would you how would you how would you how do you feel about your body now i, I, I know you said you're confident but like yeah well, like where are you at with your body where am i at 
I'm I'm back on my fitness journey again, thinking, mm-hmm. well, I've got to get back in the gym because mm-hmm. I got lazy. I went, I mm-hmm. only go weekends. Yeah, I've got so much other stuff going yeah. on as well. Yeah. Um, but I'm thinking, right, I need to start working out a bit more again, mm. just to feel more energized. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and if weight loss comes with it, yeah. Then, then yeah, yeah I'd be happy with that. Yeah, but are you like, would you say you're hundred percent like super confident with your body? Like, you I get a hang up. So I wake up yeah. in the morning, and look in the mirror, and think, could do with you know getting rid of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but that that's like five be seconds and later. Yeah, you be able to step back of it exactly. Yeah, yeah, same. You know, getting a shower and it's like actually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Same, yeah. Like same with me. Like don't get me wrong. Like people are thinking, oh, Celia, you're so you're so um confident. Like body had a, like it's not twenty four seven. Yeah, overall, I'm very confident in everything. But every now and then, I'd be like, oh, if only like my chin was a bit like this. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like every now and then. Yeah. But every then, I snap back out of it because. Because like we said earlier, it's not all about how you look. It's about you as a person, you know, the like whole package. You can look, you can look, The uh, there's no such thing as, perf- as perfect, whatever. There's beauty comes all in all sizes and all looks and everything. But if you're, you're like, you're bitchy, you got this, you just have got a horrible personality. All of this outside does not, doesn't mean anything. Yeah. I've, I've seen plenty of really good looking girls and you think, yeah. oh my God, I would not even want to speak to her. Yeah, exa- exactly, <laughs> yeah. Like I was saying before with my friend, actually in fact, we went, me and my friend Claire, we went live the other day, we were saying like, yeah, a person could be maybe like seven out of ten, but the personality is it's like, it's like, that person is more than a ten. Like that, you know what I mean? Like that, yeah. yeah. It's, it's <laughs> a vibe you get off people. It's yeah, yeah. You get off people. Oh, no, let me ask your opinion on this. So, you know, like people, you know, body positivity, I find that sometimes can be a bit toxic. What I mean by that is, yes, embrace, love your body. I, even I promote that. Love your body, like, you know, it's not always about having a big bum or all that kind of stuff, right? Love, love your body, however it is. However, you know, some um, people be like, yeah, I'm embracing my curves. Yes, you've got curves, great. But you know some people, there's a difference between, like, overweight not being to touch your toes and you can't even see your toes and if these people are like oh yeah i'm embracing my curves does that make sense i'm trying no, to say absolutely agree. i think that is very toxic because people now are so deep these people are so delusional thinking no i'm not i'm just embracing my curves mm. but they're not thinking no actually babe you, you're overweight mm. there's a difference yeah yeah I mean, uh, overweight I hate using BMI to, to kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weight, I'm not... You know? Yeah, me, same, so same, same. horrible. Yeah. But it is kind of like the things that you are able and aren't able to do. If yeah. If you, you know, are big and you struggle to get upstairs mm. or you struggle to get out of bed, mm. that is where you need to think about, you know, I might not be ever getting getting out of my bed. Mm, mm, you know, mm. cause, because the weight, it, it will be an issue. It is a yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. So I think, yeah... Fair enough, love your body the way it yeah. is, but you really need to think about, you know, just just getting yourself moving. Yeah, exactly. It's love the inside mm. as well. Look like at taking care of yourself. Both of us would say, fitness is, is for health. Yeah. It's not about weight loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the weight loss will come regardless, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, like, the way you look, the changing, um, you yeah, know, it's just natural, it's just pop that but it's biology <laughs> you know I mean? but then you, you, you do get those weird you know, relationships where you've got feeders and, and all those things. yeah yeah it's like yeah he loves my curves i need to stay like this or yeah leave me. And i'm thinking oh, <laughs> well good. well that comes down to like the woman if the, if that woman's saying that she should understand she should be doing it for herself you know what i mean like mm. you're jeopardizing your health because your man's telling you she, he likes the curves get you can still get curves but doing it a healthy way, do you know what I mean? Like, for example, eat healthy, still go to gym. You can be doing weights, lift heavy, and you still get the curves. Oh, yeah. You could build the mass. Mm. That's it, yeah. I, I, I was mortified when I actually went down to about 10 stone three. I was like, you know what? I'm losing my tits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love my curves. And yeah. when, I, when it started going a bit flat, I yeah. was like, hang on, I'm, I don't think I should be this size because now I'm... I'm, I'm you know, I want these babies back. Yeah. Well, me, mine never freaking grows, man. I've even, I'll always put weight on my legs and my bum, but just not up here. But, but, but I still love my body as a whole. Like, I still, I still, I still feel sexy as fuck. You know, yeah, no, absolutely. It? Yeah. yeah. 
at whatever size I am, I think I'm just lucky that I do have that, you know, hourglass mm, shape, mm, mm, mm. whether I'm a size 10 or whether I'm a size yeah, 18. Yeah. So I think that's, that's yeah. just natural. And also, just, 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 just to clarify, even if you don't have an hourglass frame, that does not no. mean your body's not nice. You know what I mean? Like, to be honest, I, I, my body's actually naturally pear shape. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people don't realise that it's because I went, uh, like, working out, working on my shoulders, it... I somehow created an illusion of having an hourglass. Mm. So whatever, like, you body dress, says, yeah. You know, in yeah. a certain way to make yourself yeah. a, a different shape. Yeah. So, you know. Basically, all shapes, all shapes all is shapes beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, it's not that one shape is more attractive mm. than another. It's, it's, it's just confidence. Back to that again. Yeah, confidence. Of, you know, you be secure of yourself, you yeah. You wear clothes that are too tight and make you feel like a blob and, feel, you know. So... Clothing is important. You know, if you're always dressed in a hoodie and mm. baggy clothes, yeah, yeah, okay, comfort. It is comfort. I, I'd happily wear that at home. Mm. Yeah, but when I want to go out and impress, yeah, then I would want to put on yeah. something nice and put on makeup. You know, I don't usually wear makeup. Yeah, yeah, and I, I usually just tie my hair up like I do now. Mm, mm, mm. But there are s- certain occasions, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put loads of makeup on it, and I don't care if people will think, "Oh, you're wearing too much makeup." Yeah, because I'm doing it for me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, do you? Mm. Don't worry about what people think, man. <laughs> <laughs> As I always say. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything you want us? Any like wise words you want to give oh, people about God. about body it's, confidence? It's, it's, I, I think my final note is just you should not have to worry about what other people think. So repeat that please absolutely you know <laughs> just love yourself yeah. yeah and be unique you know no two people are exactly the same mm. you were not all going to be the same person same height weight same mentality whatever yeah. you know you embrace yourself and accept others for being different mm-hmm. yes yeah, celebrate others as well mm-hmm. yeah um I was going to say, bas- I, was, well, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I just lost it. I uh, had it when you was talking. Um, yeah, no, never mind. I lost it. <laughs> it, was, it was piggybacking on something you, you yeah. say about not caring what people think. But anyway, I, I think I, I say it all I the time. I, uh, because I went to Pride yesterday. <laughs> yeah. I, I've got a lot of this from that as well. Just seeing everybody. Like, yeah. Whatever, they can wear black and mm-hmm. leather and some are wearing really bright mm-hmm. colours. You know, yeah. But everybody was different. Yeah. We were all just celebrating. Mm. I'll just be happy. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on. You're welcome. Um, so thank you so much for listening and watching. Now, if you found this beneficial, it was good. You should relate, relate. Uh, you relate. It was. Uh, you found it relatable. You think anyone could benefit from it or would enjoy this? Please share. Show us love, and yeah, you know the drill. Thank you very much. <laughs>